Hello and a very warm welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Well, inequalities in access to bare necessities like drinking water, sanitation, hygiene and housing conditions continue to exist between urban and rural India despite widespread improvements in each of these aspects. The economic survey for 2020-2021 has shown using a newly constructed bare necessities index or BNI. The BNI builds on the idea of thalinomics in the economic survey for 2019-20 through which it had sought to examine the access to food in the country. The BNI summarizes 26 indicators on five dimensions, water, sanitation, housing, micro-environment and other facilities and has been created for all states for 2012 to 2018 using NSO data. The index classifies areas in three levels of access, high, medium, low to bare necessities. The survey has underlined the need to focus on reducing variations in the access to bare necessities across states between rural and urban areas and between income groups. In this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze the bare necessities index. Joining me on the program today are Dr. Uh, Dr. Arvind Virmani, Chairman Egro Foundation, Surojit Gupta, Senior Editor of The Times of India and Dr. P. Pulla Rao, Economist. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The the big picture. Dr. Birmani, let me begin the program with you first. You know, last year we saw the entry of Thalinomics in the economic survey. This year it is the BNI or Bare Necessities Index. Your thoughts and what do you make of the BNI? Just uh, as a background, one should remember the earlier chapter discussion which the survey does, which is on uh, the, the relationship between economic growth, uh, poverty reduction, and income distribution. So that's the backdrop. If necessary, we can come back to it. But let me wade into the index. So uh, I find these indices are useful as a summary measure if we want to compare, let's say, one state performance over time, or if you want to uh, uh, compare one state with another state or other states. So they are very useful for these type of things uh, because they provide a summary and draw attention when somebody is performing very well or badly, uh, etc. But I do not find such indices useful if we want to uh, take it to the policy measures, then it's better to look at the subcategories like whether it's sewage and sanitation, health uh, measures or education and whatever. So that's a preliminary comment. And just incidentally, in a global context, it's a little more, even more tricky uh, because there are some very wide differences. You know, with, within a country, if you're looking at states, by and large, the culture, history, rules, etc., are the same. But if you look across countries, you know, many of these standardizations are done, uh, uh, you know, starting with the data from one country. So, so one has to be more cautious with these, but such an index, I think, is highly, very useful uh, to draw attention uh, uh, to things which should, should receive more attention. Absolutely. Okay. Since we are here, Surajit, let me bring you into the picture now. So, uh, you know, as far as necessities are concerned, what is it that constitute bare necessities and what has been done, you know, over the years? So, the last, uh, uh, what, about six years of data between 2012 to 2018 is what we are looking at as far as the BNI is concerned. So, you know, what has been done to provide these bare necessities? So, you see, uh Every economic survey uh, tries to uh, introduce new ideas. So BNI is a welcome uh, addition to that uh, uh, tradition. Uh, well, if you look at uh, the data uh, over 2012 and 2018 and the measures that have been unleashed by the government, uh, say, say, for example, uh, the uh, uh, Pradhan Mantri Awaz Yojana, the the uh, the Sobhagya, you know, the sanitation program, uh, Swachh Bharat Mission. So there, there's a string of uh, you know programs which have been launched. So these in this is uh, what they do is uh, I mean I agree with uh, that uh, you know you have to go to the micro level and let me tell you that this BNI also has sub indices. So you go down to drinking water access and access uh, uh, how is the kitchen uh, uh, you know of a person uh, in a village or rural areas 
and and i think that uh, these are useful uh, tools to basically aid in data driven policy so unless you have data the, how to measure the efficiency of your programs so i think it's a it's a very good um, uh, addition to what we have uh, now because we also have the uh, niti aayog's uh, sustainable development goals index as well so it's a it's a, it's a very very important addition absolutely all right dr pullar rao so you know let's also talk about uh, the variation and how to reduce the variation across uh, you know ac uh, uh, across populations across you know uh, social groupings you know that's what the economic survey talks about it talks about how through the bni we need to really ensure that we reduce the variation in the access to bare necessities across the board so how do we do that yes. Yes, definitely. You know, roti kapra makan has been a slogan for many years. And and in addition to that, now people are talking about you know access to gas cylinders, uh, access to drinking water, access to sanitation, and even even sanitation. You know, things like uh, you know uh, uh, what are the local conditions like whether uh, uh, you know the, uh, as a people are. Uh, the authorities are undertaking, uh, you know, spraying of insecticides or, or to kill mosquitoes and uh, all those things at the micro level. So I, I think uh, uh, it, is, it is an important uh, uh, aspect of uh, policy making of to ensure how policies are working at the ground level, absolutely, at the, at the level of the citizens. So it's all about uh, what we have been seeing: uh, ease of living. Kind of thing, whether it is programs are successful or are we reach the last mile or not, so that that's that's very very important. Okay, sure, Dr. Pullarao, the question was for you, but it's uh, you know let's let's add and let's build on that. So you know, as far as uh, you know, uh, reducing the variation in access to bare necessities is concerned. would you like to add to that? What do you think needs to be done? What needs to be the key focus area? Where do we need to start first? What is it that is on top of the agenda, or should be on top of the agenda? Let me take you straight away to what the youth require, because the elderly population, you know, in a few years will be phased off. During the pandemic, even earlier, we found the biggest need was internet and smartphones. You know, I maybe I'm little, I'm jumping a little ahead. Of when you talk of bare necessities. you are talking of the kitchen ventilation all these things were listed there in various forms so i believe i don't know if our distinguished guests would agree that you need a quantum jump pulse the youth wherever you found this time they have been demanding this for home schooling for work from home the equality feeling also most of the people can afford phones those who can't afford phones they are smartphones internet are in a very deprived situation but by and large on looking at the rationing in the states the public distribution system and the freebies if i may use a word which have been given basic necessities have been taken care of you know maybe i'm referring to a southern states andhra karnataka tamil nadu but also we found in the last few years many other states also have moved on therefore maybe when they were itemizing these lists maybe they should have done a little more wider survey and the bare necessity from the perception of the people at home this is target they want a little more uplift they want things in the electronics world they want to catch up they want access to knowledge no point giving a scholarship food water to students in far off places and those who can afford it also those who are not got the income to get these things on their own i do realize many state governments are thinking of these things but maybe we should give a special this should include giving you know to reduce the equality inequalities which you have mentioned of public distribution this may be one of the things government can consider to really give them a chance you know their self they get skills by that they are able to access knowledge they find out what others are doing you know you will be as you are very much aware 15 20 lakh people are sitting for just the competitive exams every year for 5 10000 jobs that's a kind of awareness that's going on in the country for some sections so maybe i would think 
that rather than saying I'm going to give more rice, rice is given everywhere, wheat is given everywhere, these bare necessities are being done well in most states. Most states, I, I can't go to Bihar and say the same thing, or Uttar Pradesh or parts of Jharkhand. So I would like one of the easiest ways is to target the younger generation, the school-going generation, take what they need so that they get equal access to education, then other things fall into place, their qualifications, their confidence, and their, you know, this kind of thing, that's what I believe will help. You, yes, you give them a little more ration, give them a little more, yes, they need help, they need all these other things which have come out. And in that report itself, our chief economic advisor has also said that the private health sector has been lagging, not doing well, we have to go to the government sector and improve it. All those things will be done on a micro basis. But perhaps one of the quick ways a vaccination to reduce this inequality may be these kind of things which will make people more accessible. I know you've been touring all around the country and you would have noticed that. You know, there's a certain kind of innocence which has come about from lack of access to these things. And, uh, and therefore, maybe the government should go that extra step, take that leap. You can't have this as a slow progress. The rising expectations in the country, you know, the rising feelings of you know, a lot of these rage feelings that we see, they'll be subdued if perhaps you take this extra jump. Absolutely. All right. So, you know, Dr. Irmani, since we are here then, have the bare necessities become much more than just your roti, kapda and makan? Are we looking at, you know, an aspirational India looking beyond just these, these simple necessities and the bare necessities becoming a lot more wider than just these, these three aspects? That's a very good question. But one should remember that earlier we used to call them basic needs. Now we are calling them bare necessities. Uh, so anyway, that, that's just a wording change. Uh, but uh, I think the good way to think of it is to go back to the start of the pandemic. If you remember, the lockdown completely exempted what we called essential goods and services. But uh, remember, essential goods and services included electricity. It included TV and uh, telecommunications. It included telephones, etc. So in that sense, you are absolutely right. Uh, in a way, we've already shown in the lockdown that now essential goods and services include some of those things. But let me make another related point, which is very important for economists to understand. And that is that government must provide public goods and services. You know, public goods, because these have been relatively neglected. There are tons of World Bank reports from, let's say, past three decades which show that India's focus on public goods because the, the rich can always substitute these goods by very expensive methods. By, by, but by definition, public goods are very uh, expensive to provide individually. So it's impossible for the poor to do so. So uh, very important sewage and sanitation, for example, is a very important public good. We must ensure that that is uniformly given that has a huge impact on reducing inequality. So that's, uh, uh, we mustn't forget that. But coming back to your uh, question, I, I agree with uh, Professor that, for example, uh, uh, access to internet now is, a, is absolutely essential for equality. So uh, in the remote areas, you know, we've talked about uh, connecting every district headquarters. Uh, now with Bharat Net, uh, you know, uh, is being expanded to every village, uh, etc. I think that's very, very important for the future. If we are going to get our youth in, uh, uh, Professor has uh, rightly pointed this out, because the youth is the future. If they don't, if 50% of the youth living somewhere in some remote area, rural area, do not have access to internet, that's going to be a huge uh, inequality, not just for education, but for yeah. health. There's going to be e-medicine all over the place. There are many startups. There's going to be e-education, e-skilling, and all kinds of e-governance. So if you don't have access to the internet, it's going to be a source of huge inequality. So very, very important point uh, made by uh, Professor. And I think the government must focus, for example, I have been saying this Bharat net must be expanded very uh, fast. But just one small thing which is not well known, I had occasion, this space liberalization is a very important thing people don't realize. I had occasion to uh, talk to a young entrepreneur who is providing in the next three months, six months, He's going to provide connectivity to every area of, of the country, including 300 miles offshore. That's going to be amazing transformation. 
you know, uh, the fishermen will be directly able to connect through the satellite and he's made it very cheap. The receiving stations, the transmitting stations, they have made them very small and cheap. So innovation, very important, connectivity, very important. Absolutely. All right. So, Rujit, since we are here, then, you know, uh, uh, both uh, Dr. Irmani and Dr. Pula Rao there on the same page really as to what needs to be done and how we need to go forward. So, that's a good thing. So, uh, so Rujit, what about the likely cost uh, that the government will have to bear in trying to give out these bare necessities? Can they be provided in, uh, you know, in a year where the pandemic is still rearing its ugly head? You know, uh, if, uh, these are programs, government programs have been there. Uh, there. There will be allocations for that in the budget. Uh, there will be increased allocations in some sectors like health. Uh, Dr. Professor Rao and uh, Dr. Brinmani uh, rightly said that, you know, uh, maybe this index could also look at the, uh, the access to internet and smartphones. Because if you look at the pandemic, uh, during the pandemic, what happened is that schools were closed. So, the classes were being held on smartphones and a lot of people did not have access. So you are risking, uh, you know, losing a huge chunk of the population. You are you're thinking of leaving them out if they don't have access to internet and uh, telephones. And uh, the Digital India program, the BharatNet program is there, but it needs to be accelerated. So in terms of, uh, that's a very important addition that, uh, that this index can do. But let me tell you also uh, that... Uh, you know why uh, this there's a, also a large part of the population which is still struggling for bare necessities so it is very important to ensure that we we, we measure whether the, these programs that the government is running are reaching them so that's very critical but along with it new challenges have the pandemic has given us new challenges and those challenges uh, like uh, you know access to internet access to smartphones access to education telemedicine, you know, how do you do this in this country? So those are aspects which need to be uh, included and focused upon. And I'm sure as far as allegations are concerned, allegations have been there. A lot of money uh, has been in the government and he knows it very well that, uh, you know, successive governments have uh, increased allegations on these social sector schemes. Uh, so I guess, uh, and I hope, and uh, as the economic survey says, that finally healthcare has you know, come at the center stage. So I guess it's an important budget that we are looking at. As well. There's no doubt that it's an important budget that we are looking at. And in many ways, it could possibly be a historic budget as well. One thing is for sure, there will be no papers this time around as far as the budget is concerned. So that's going to be a first two. Dr. Pularao, uh, you know, let's bring in another aspect. You know, it's something that you touched upon in your opening remark. I'd like you to dwell upon that a little more. You know, what about coordination and convergence of schemes between the state and the center or states and center? Absolutely necessary. And the multiplicity of schemes which are on the books, I think only Professor uh, Virmani probably knows the number of schemes that are there. He has made many of them, maybe. Therefore, the multiplicity of schemes has become, you know, very infructious, in my opinion. Just maintaining them, running them, the bureaucrats get their job done. So maybe they go, the government should have also announced that we're going to dovetail them, we're going to make them a little less and consult the states. And as far as Mr. Subhajit Gupta has mentioned, one other thing I want to mention, Kerala is state, which has enormous public distribution system because politically so aware, yet you found very pathetic pictures of children going on hilltops, standing on top of transmission towers, because they had no access. I found many charitable organizations in a state like Kerala now are getting old TV sets and giving them to the people. When I asked why, they said they don't have it. Yes, they have food, oil, all these things are given by the government, unemployment allowance, but this they don't have it. So coming back, I would say that the government should focus on associating the states, telling the states we are ready to support this quantum leap into going from dal roti food cooperation to giving a smartphone, can we get a cheap smartphone to a kid rather than one more kilo of wheat? I'd say yes. I, you know, basically, I might come up for criticism when I say that most states are able to stave off starvation, most states are offering good rations, 
And because there is a political demand for it, there is an intense democratic awareness for that. Therefore, you should take this leap, get the states on board, and I don't think we have time for matching grants as far as getting a scheme, as far as the smartphone is concerned. You know, there are two kinds of people in this country. Those with smartphones, those without smartphones. I mean, I may be a little bit overstressing it because that's what I found. I'll give one more example. You know, I, you know I, from Kuala Lumpur, where the dam is coming up, there are three to four lakh displaced people and I have been raising their issues. At a meeting, I asked very, very high up in the government of India, what more do you want? I said, I want a smartphone for every displaced person. I want maybe a cheap television set. What do you mean? They don't have housing. We're going to give them housing. I said, this will take them to the equal of the other people around them. Therefore, the state should be brought on board. And all the agencies of government which are dealing with this, they should be told you focus on the next generation. You focused on the next uh, desires of people, you know, and perhaps their necessity should may become, as somebody has just remarked, I think it was Professor Vermani, you should probably say future necessities or something contemporary, equ equal necessities. When I find my smartphone without it, I can't sit also. Why can't the others have that feeling? Therefore, I believe the state, to answer your question, should come forward. I believe it should not be a matching grant scheme. I should be, it can be a one-time scheme to cover the younger generation and all the schools, but it's very necessary. Otherwise, we are fast losing time. And the right. advantage, the IT advantage that India has, especially, you know, if you look around a state like Andhra, Karnataka, and other places, so in the remote villages, people came back to work from home, and they're employed in U.S. firms or Canadian firms, you know, in tribal areas. Why should we lose that advantage? Why don't we keep that advantage, which is India's advantage, by going very aggressively for the next generation bare necessities? So I believe there's a lot of scope. All the states will cooperate. We saw during the pandemic, they all cooperated. They all right. implemented central government directives. You know, we saw the prime minister's meetings. They all did it. They followed it. Therefore, that kind of unity will be there. If you can take them into confidence and say, hey, we are giving you this, like Ayushman Bharat, like the farmers, grants. You know, each farmer is getting 6,000 rupees. Can't you give a 2,000 rupees smartphone to him for his family? And I'm just proposing these ideas. The benefit of it will be enormous. And it will be, you know, more multifold from what you give other things. So right. I think we should move on. Okay, points taken, points noted. Time to get quick. Closing comments from all my panelists to the best way forward as well and what to expect really from the budget. If the BNI is anything to go by, Dr. Virmani, uh, you know, is it an indication that the social sector spending or allocation uh, is going to be high? Well, let me just start with, you know, the, the, this poverty alleviation scheme. The last time I counted, there were between 250 to 300 different central and state government schemes at the district level. So your earlier question is absolutely valid. These must be integrated uh, both at the central and the state level and between the two. And I have proposed actually for this budget a way to start doing that. Uh, uh, the, the second issue is that we should not, I mean, it's okay the digital has to be addressed, but that does not mean we forget the traditional. And Surajit has quite rightly emphasized. And, and to, in my mind, the key one is what I call public health. Public health has been neglected. We have talked, you know, individual health versus public health. You know, public health means sewage and sanitation. Many people don't knew, need, know this, but my research has shown there's something called environmental enteropathy, which goes through the sewage system and infects people's ability to absorb nutrition. So this stunting we keep saying is due to lack of nutrition is not that they don't eat anything, it's that they cannot absorb it. So sewage and sanitation is critical. Health education, you know, if you go to a, 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 a school, uh, primary school in the U.S., they teach you about germs, about cleanliness. We had to do it during the pandemic. So there are things which we forget. These are public goods which have to be done by the public. You know, I know I can teach my uh, son or my grandson, but many of the poor people don't get it. They have to be told this in schools. They have to be taught these things. So I would say there are many areas of traditional which 
should not be neglected and and of course we must also pursue bharatnet etc absolutely surajit well uh, I, i totally agree with dr virmani uh, and it, it, you know we have to realize that it's not a either or a situation uh, so you have to basically uh, go with the traditional focus on the traditional keeping in view the fact that there's a large chunk which is still still fighting for basic necessities and then also include ideas like smartphones to bridge the digital divide so i guess uh, uh, there will be allocations and let me tell you about the schemes that uh, we are talking about professor the money is absolutely right that these are plethora of schemes there are no dirt of schemes and there are schemes only which are there for running a few bureaucrats they are running it and that's it so i guess um, uh, these on the budget day we will also have the finance commission report and it will also talk about the whole thing of reforming this whole thing and i i uh, you, you would have seen in the past also there have been efforts to basically cut down on these schemes and have effective and focused scheme so i i guess that is the way forward all right and dr pularao very quickly closing comments very from you very simply every block hospital or mandal hospital should be upgraded you know that was some kind of promise during the pandemic start of the pandemic that will answer what dr virmani has said you know immediately you get a quantum leap in health services available at the block level focus on that focus on the next generation thing also don't ignore the traditional as mr subhajit gupta has been stressing very necessary and as dr virmani has said get rid of some of these schemes which are just keeping out desk officers in various ministries are sorry just feasting on them and they are nothing for the people so there is it's a time for change it's a time for tradition and we hope this budget will consider all these aspects okay all right on that note then i'll call it a wrap on this edition of the big picture thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us what's coming out of this discussion is that the uh, bare necessities index is a good way to ensure equal access to bare necessities across sectors across states and across the country as far as what to expect from the budget is concerned it looks like the allocation will be increased in the social sector schemes healthcare seems like it will get its due finally but we need to have a special focus or a special attention on public health multiplicity of schemes has to be addressed at some point in time because there are over 250 um uh, you know schemes which are very very similar so this needs to be integrated we need to see better synergy between the center and the states and uh, also the schemes need to be futuristic keeping in mind that bare necessities uh, you know have the idea of bare necessities have changed over the years and will change for the next generation as well with that it's a wrap see you again next time